Chicken thighs are definitely one of the most underappreciated parts of the chicken, but they're so full of flavor. I put them right up there with chicken wings as my favorite part of the chicken. And that's what we're making today, and a whole bunch of them. This is family style. So I need to find a way to cook these fast. Enter the rimmed baking sheet. I'm gonna preheat this pan. All the chicken goes on at once. Very easy method. So I'm gonna put this in a cold oven and then set the oven to 450 degrees. All right, next up, we're making a salsa verde, that beautiful Italian garlic and parsley sauce. We're gonna roast some garlic. So I've got a whole head here, and I just wanna take off the outer papery skin, and I'll separate all these cloves inside. Again, these are unpeeled, obviously. And I'm gonna add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, about a tablespoon. Let me toss these. And now I mentioned this is gonna be a roasted garlic salsa verde. We're not gonna roast these right in the oven the whole time. We're gonna speed things up by using the microwave. I'm gonna put a microwave safe plate right on top. Put this in the microwave and cook it between two to five minutes until the cloves are nice and tender. All right, these have a little bit of time left, but I am going to go ahead and stir this halfway through just to make sure that they're cooking evenly. Oh, kitchen filled with the smell of garlic. Plate goes back on and it probably needs another two minutes. The smell in here right now is amazing. Ugh. All right, so let's take a look at the garlic and see if it's nice and tender. Just using a paring knife here, you can see it's incredibly tender. So we're done with the microwave. It gave us a little bit of a head start. We're gonna finish roasting these in the oven. So I've got two sheets of aluminum foil, about 12 inches in width. All right, and I will pour this garlic, oh, amazing, just right into the center that little bit of oil there too. Top with another piece of foil. And then I'm gonna start to kind of fold this up into about a seven inch packet. All right, that looks great. I'm gonna set that aside for just a minute. As I mentioned before, we're making quite a bit. These are eight chicken thighs. Each of them weighs about six to eight ounces. And that's important because we want these to cook all at the same rate. So we just need to do a couple of things to the chicken. For one thing, I wanna make sure that they are well trimmed because any extra skin or extra fat is just not a good situation. A couple different ways that you can trim chicken thighs. You can use a chef's knife, which I'll do as well. But I also like to use a pair of kitchen shears to just get rid of the skin. And it's also a great way of kind of getting around this little flabby fat that's on the outside. But you don't need to go too crazy here. Whatever's easiest. Now, chicken thighs are beautiful, especially when that skin is rendered and crisp. But right underneath that skin is a layer of fat and it can be hard for it to render out. So I'm gonna take a metal skewer. You can also use a paring knife if you want. I'm gonna poke each of these about 10 times. Poking these holes in the chicken really helps. It creates these little channels that the fat can render out of. Okay, let's season the chicken. I've got one and a quarter teaspoons of table salt in here. You can also use kosher salt. You would wanna use roughly double the amount and hit it with some pepper. It's pepper to taste. Now, whenever I'm working with raw meat, I always like to portion out the salt and pepper separately instead of getting it out of a big salt box. That way you don't contaminate everything else. And let me flip these over. More salt and more pepper. And for luck. All right, one more thing to do before I go get that super hot sheet pan. I'm gonna spray them with a little bit of vegetable oil cooking spray, and that's gonna help prevent them from sticking to that pan, but also help promote a really crisp crust. So let's go get that sheet pan. Super hot. And I wanna remind myself not to grab it, so I'm gonna put this towel right on the corner here. Put these thighs right on that sheet pan, but skin side down, and we should hear a good sizzle, just like that. And that's what I meant by this acting basically like a big old skillet. All right, and I don't wanna forget that packet of garlic. I'm just gonna throw this right on there for a second while we move back to the oven. All right, now before I put the chicken on the lower rack, I'm gonna go ahead and put this packet of garlic on the top rack. And we'll cook this until the thighs register about 160 degrees. That's gonna take between 20 to 25 minutes. But after 10 minutes, I'm gonna go in there and get the garlic. It's been about 10 minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and rotate the chicken just so that it cooks more evenly. There we go. That probably has another good 10 to 15 minutes left, but while I'm here, I might as well grab the garlic. It only needed 10 minutes of cooking time. Ooh, all right. 
Smells great, but I want to cool down this garlic. So I'm just going to make a slit in here and just open that a little bit. I'm going to let that cool off while we work on the rest of our salsa verde. Now, of course, salsa verde, main component is parsley. Now, I like to store our parsley in a little jug of water because it reminds me, A, that my husband never sends me flowers, and this will have to do, but also it's just going to keep the herbs nice and lively. I could pick off these one at a time, and that is fine if you want to do that too, but I like to start shaving the leaves off. I need about a cup, and then if I see any big stems in there, I'll just get rid of that. Now, this I will throw in the freezer. This is great for stock, all these parsley stems. Amazing flavor. All right, and I just need to do a little bit of picking here. Not too bad. That looks great. So now I'll put the parsley into the food processor. And our next ingredient is fresh lemon. We need about two tablespoons of lemon juice. Cut it in half. And for big lemons like this, especially if I'm using a citrus press, I like to quarter them. You can get a lot more juice out that way. So two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. Next up, and this is really what makes it an Italian salsa verde, is capers and anchovies. I've got two tablespoons of capers, which I've rinsed. And while I was at the sink, I went ahead and rinsed two anchovy fillets as well, patted them dry, and these can go right into the food processor. Some salt, a quarter teaspoon. This is table salt. So at this point, the garlic cooled off just enough so that I can handle them. And we're gonna squeeze these right into our food processor. That caramelization, that is some great flavor just for being in the oven for 10 minutes. I mean, look how deeply colored that is. That is gorgeous. All right, so I'm gonna pulse this for about five seconds until the parsley and the garlic are broken down. All right, so I do wanna get in there, just start scraping down the sides a little bit here. But now that the parsley is pretty broken down, we can add our other ingredients. Now I've got a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes and a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. Something that's fruity is perfect for this job. Just a quarter cup, I'll add that in, and I'm just gonna pulse this until the parsley is broken down a little bit more and it's all mixed. I don't wanna overprocess this at this point because now I've added the olive oil, and if you overprocess olive oil, it can start to taste a little bitter. I'll give it a few pulses. Oh, the lemon and the freshness of the parsley, second to none. This is great on grilled foods too. It's very similar to a chimichurri. So if you're looking for something a little different, this is a great sauce to make, even if you're not making chicken thighs. All right, so that looks great. I've got a little bit of cleanup to do and then the chicken should be ready. That's looking good. All right, so the temp I'm looking for is 160. There we go, 161, close enough. The chicken is obviously not cooked through. 160 is not a safe temperature for chicken thighs, but we're not done yet. I went ahead and preheated the broiler because we're gonna finish these now skin side up. And that hot pan really did a great job rendering that chicken skin. It's just starting to color. If some of the skin sticks, that's okay. That's why I have a spatula. There we go. So now that the broiler is heated, I'm gonna put the chicken right on the top rack, closer to the broiler. I'm gonna let this go for about another five minutes or until the thighs register 175. Ooh, nice and browned and super crisp. It's about as good as it gets. Just five minutes, that's all it took for those skins to get nice and brown, but you can see that they're charred, almost like chicharrones on top. Beautiful. Let's make sure that they're registering 175. Yep, just over 175, that's perfect. All right, so put these onto a platter here. We're so close to the end, but we need to let this sit for five minutes while I clean up and go get the sauce. Chicken thighs have rested, it's time to finally eat. Now before I tuck in here, I just want you to hear how crisp this chicken skin is. That is super crisp. All right, so I'm gonna go for this one in the front here. And a little bit of the salsa verde on the top. Gorgeous. You know what? I love this salsa, so I'm going to put some on the side too. All right, so now I'm going to tuck in right here. Super juicy meat. And the skin, look how paper thin that is. That is really well rendered. Grab a little bit of that salsa there. Hmm. 
Amazing. And chicken thighs are pretty rich. It's great to serve it with a sauce just like this because it has some of that lemon and it's gonna break through some of that fat. It's gorgeous. Look how juicy. Oh, now I'm getting some of that crunch of that chicken skin. It is unbelievable. That might be the easiest way to cook chicken thighs and they are delicious. Now the keys to making them at home, poke the chicken skin, start them on a preheated sheet pan, and then finish them under the broiler. So from America's Test Kitchen at home, the world's best oven roasted chicken thighs. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.